Around the end of the Second World War, there was a very important shift in the U.S., with the country moving more towards vehicular travel. This instantly changed the way urban planning worked, with traffic increasing immediately and cities moving farther out of their downtowns. With this, the idea of freeways was thought up. During the 1940s and early 1950s, many important divided highways were built, usually as turnpikes, including the Pennsylvania Turnpike, New Jersey Turnpike, and many more. Importantly, urban planners were yet to learn of the negative repercussions that would come with these highways, especially in urban areas. So powerful political figures across major cities and states began to make their plans to build wide freeways to make travel extremely efficient for cars. New York had a unique history when it comes to this, because Robert Moses resided there and had a lot of impact on the immediate planning of how things would be built. One of the things that came from this was the Lake Ontario Parkway in north central New York, a highway that looks all around weird, from its location and condition all the way to its end point. So today we're going to talk about what it is and why it's here. Before the video starts though, make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. It's super easy for you and it's the best way to easily help me out. I appreciate it more than you think I do. So if you wouldn't mind, it would really help me out. Thank you. So first, let's start by giving an overview of the highway in its current state so you can see for yourself what's going on and why it's so strange. Its eastern terminus is north of Rochester near Charlotte Beach where it ends fairly suddenly in what seems to be a sort of business district for the community. Moving west, it passes through the northern lakeside suburbs of Rochester, where it is still up to interstate standards and sees an average amount of traffic. But as it works its way out of the city, things obviously start to get more rural, and it doesn't serve the same type of purpose it would in the more urban areas. Being the Lake Ontario Parkway, it sort of hugs the coastline, going through some more swampy landscapes northwest of the city before it turns fully to the west and continues along the coast. It's around there that the parkway starts to see at-grade intersections and is no longer considered a freeway. Later on, there's an interchange with the entrance to Hamlin Beach State Park, showing some of the more scenic aspects of the route. It then goes back to freeway standards, where it stays for the rest of the route. Moving on, it continues to hug the coast for around 10 miles before curving slightly inland and seeing an important interchange with State Route 98 before going over the Oak Orchard River. We'll find out why it's important later, but finally it ends at a stub interchange near Lakeside State Park, where it was obviously meant to continue. So that's the route, traveling along the lake for 35 miles before ending suddenly. Obviously, a lot of this story is in the history, so let's get into that now. Going back to 1944, when the proposal was put forward to create the Lake Ontario State Parkway, this project was meant to be part of the Seaway Trail, which would go from Erie, Pennsylvania into northern New York along the coastline. The Lake Ontario portion of the highway was planned to extend from Charlotte Beach north of Rochester all the way to Niagara Falls north of Buffalo. Later on, the terminus was changed to Fort Niagara around 11 miles north of Niagara Falls. From there, construction began, with the first section opening around 1950, linking Hamlin Beach and State Route 261. This happens to be the portion that is not up to freeway standards, so I'm not sure if the plan changed at some point for how the parkway was to be built. The portion closer to Rochester was slowly built during the 1950s and 60s, and the western portion to Hamlin Beach State Park was built in the 60s and finally finished in 1972, opening in 1973. And then construction just stopped after that, with nothing being built even to present day. Why is this? It seemed like the building process was going fine, and the highway was being completed. Well, there's a major reason for this that happened in the 1960s. So a U.S. Supreme Court ruling in 1964 switched the representation in state assemblies to evenly populated districts rather than counties. This meant something major for the state because almost all of the population is in the New York City area, meaning they got a sudden and extreme gain in political power. Upstate New York took a back seat, and a lot of its projects with it. With the state legislature putting its focus on the counties closer to New York City, the Parkway project lost support, and the completion process was not funded and wasn't able to get itself back off the ground. This was a pretty big problem for a lot of road projects in upstate New York including State Route 531, also in Rochester, a sort of sister highway to the Lake Ontario Parkway. 
Before the court ruling in 1964, a portion of this road was built, which is now I-490, with the new Route 531 then coming off of it. The plan was approved for the highway to also make its way towards Niagara Falls, making it very similar to Lake Ontario Parkway. It was built for around 8 miles to State Route 36, and it was even included in the 1968 original interstate plan as Interstate 531. But in 1971, the city of Niagara Falls released a regional highway plan for the Buffalo-Niagara Falls area in 1971, and that plan didn't even mention the Niagara Falls-Rochester Expressway, with the new assembly making it very difficult to keep organized around county lines. And no assemblyman stood up for the project, making it another unfinished highway. Now, the highway didn't fall into the same condition, with it still serving the suburban area outside of the city in places like Spencerport into Brookport. In fact, it was repaved in 2022, and it looks pretty good. But our Lake Ontario Parkway was not as lucky. The highway has been severely neglected since its abandonment. Some portions have kept themselves in decent shape for an amount of time, but other portions have fallen into very poor condition. The worst stretch is near the western terminus from State Route 98 to Lakeside State Park, where the highway has become absolutely embarrassing. There are potholes everywhere, and significant bumps and cracks are seen all over. This makes the road almost unusable. This is good though, because the road is almost unused. I've tried as hard as I can, but it's basically impossible to find cars on Street View at any point in this stretch. And there's basically no point to risk you and your vehicle to be on this stretch of highway. Now, in 2012, this bad condition caused a major and honestly embarrassing change, with the five-mile stretch being closed during winters, citing low traffic volumes. Basically, the road was not being used anymore, and instead of fixing it, the state wanted a cheaper option. There were serious talks about closing the stretch permanently and just letting it fall apart. But instead, to preserve the landmark, the state decided on closing it for winters so they didn't have to worry about upkeep, which in all fairness has saved roughly $70,000 annually in plowing costs. When I first heard about the highway and saw the winter closure, I thought it had to do with something like lake effect snow or harsh winds. But finding out it was simply because of bad road conditions was a bit of a bummer. Now, there has been a lot of talks of what they'll do with the highway, repairing it, expanding it, or letting it fall into disrepair, and the state hasn't necessarily shut those talks down. In 2017, the state gifted around $14 million to repave the sections from Route 19 to State Route 237 near Hamlin Beach, and it was completed in 2018. This at least put that part of the highway in better condition, but there's still a lot to be repaired if they want to preserve the highway. Going back to the early history of the Lake Ontario Parkway, it's interesting to see what it's become. Designed by Robert Moses, an extremely important figure in the state and country's urban planning, the highway was meant to be an important connection and scenic route to show off the state's beauty. It ended up being yet another project that was not completed in this part of the country, especially designed and thought up by Robert Moses. There have been talks about finally finishing the parkway, but the state hasn't even given up enough funds to repave the worst stretches of this highway. And with all the lakeside environmental effects and public backlash, it's basically impossible that the road will ever get finished. The state can only hope it stays in good enough condition to not be a complete failure of a project. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, JL, Sir JK17, Bryson, Sturfoles, Jerome McCall, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, KMS162, Jeremy Jarvis, Christopher DeAngelis, Darkbird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Schwine, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf. I appreciate you all very much. You really help out the channel. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It's just an extra way to help out the channel if you appreciate the content. All this money goes straight into my savings, so if you appreciate the content and you want to help me out as a person, that's the best way to do it. Thank you.